So why does Rusty Bowers, of all people, still say that he would vote for President Trump, former President Trump, if he's the 2024 GOP nominee? Bowers is the Speaker of the Arizona State House. He was the star witness on Tuesday at the January 6th committee hearing. He told in painstaking detail how he was browbeaten and cajoled by the Trump administration, by the president, by the president's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. It was Rusty Bowers who had the exchange with Giuliani when he was trying Giuliani to manipulate the outcome in Arizona, where Giuliani said, we have a lot of theories, we don't have a lot of evidence. Back on December 4 of 2020, this is a month after the election, a month before January 6, Bowers took the unusual and notable move of releasing a statement criticizing Team Trump's efforts. He said, as a conservative Republican, I don't like the results of the presidential election. I voted for President Trump and worked hard to reelect him, but I cannot and will not entertain a suggestion that we violate current law to change the outcome of a certified election. And then Rusty Bowers found himself and his family subject to ridicule, scorn, and threats from people who were upset because he wouldn't do what Donald Trump wanted him to do. As the Washington Post reported, quote, Bowers received more than 20,000 emails and 10,000 voicemails every day. Armed protesters gathered outside his house and screamed that he was a pedophile. This April, Bowers was among those whom the JFK Presidential Library bestowed a Profile in Courage Award. His fellow awardees were President Zelensky, Liz Cheney, Jocelyn Benson, Shea Moss. Days before Bauer's appearance, before the January 6th committee, the former president attacked him again in a statement, calling him a rhino, playing along with the unselect committee, and claiming that Bowers had credited Trump with his election and, quote, he told me that the election was rigged and that I won Arizona. Rusty Bowers refuted that and told his story again at the hearing on TV and in front of a worldwide audience. And I said, look, you are asking me to do something that is counter to my oath when I swore to the Constitution to uphold it, and I also swore to the Constitution and the laws of the state of Arizona, and this is totally foreign as a, an idea or a theory to me, and I would never do anything of such magnitude without deep consultation with qualified attorneys. And I said, I've got some good attorneys and I'm going to give you their names. Uh, but you are asking me to do something against my oath and I will not break my oath. Many watched and said, hey, stand up guy doing the right thing. He also described to the committee the threats that he'd received along with family members. And yet, despite all this, Bowers had told the Associated Press this about Donald Trump. If he is the nominee, if he was up against Biden, I'd vote for him again, simply because what he did the first time before COVID was so good for the country, in my view, it was great. Pretty stunning stuff. In The Atlantic, David Graham wrote a piece under this headline, the comment that reveals the depths of the Republican Party's moral collapse. If even Rusty Bowers is willing to back Trump again, the outlook for popular democracy is very bleak. Joining me now is Rusty Bowers. Mr. Speaker, thanks so much for being here. Help us understand, how can you say, hey, he asked me to do something illegal, and yet I'd still contemplate voting for him again? I've, I've thought, obviously, a lot about that, Michael, since early, it was on, on a Monday night that I talked to the AP, who's a friend, and the context of the question was, uh, caused me to kind of revert to what you do when people ask you, who are you going to vote for? And that, and in, in many ways, that's what's happened. Stick a mic in my face. Will you vote for Trump again versus Biden? And, I, and I, if you're limiting the choice to those two, just because of the implementation of the policy, I would have to go with the one who would, live, would, would implement the policy. If you're asking me if I want Donald Trump to be president again, the answer is no, I don't. And I want options. And you've mentioned in your, in the previous feed that I, a, a, a great choice. And I'm hoping that it works out that way because I want somebody who does respect the Constitution and won't intimidate people as a, a rule of his psyche. And uh, I, I want something different in, a, in the man, in the character of the man or the woman. Give me one. I'm, I'm ready it, to have character in that office is critical at this time in our history. Okay, so here's what I'm hearing. 
he's not your choice. But still, if it were Trump v. Biden, you'd feel committed to go with Trump and not with Biden, which to many, myself included, seems in lieu of how you were treated, like you're, you're elevating personal political positions over the fundamentals of the system. In other words, without the fundamentals being intact, as you evidenced, we're not even going to have policy considerations and debate. Does that make sense? I think, Michael, it does make sense. I'm not saying I'm some perfect intellectual paragon of, of perfection. I'm not. But the principles that I believe in, I'm a conservative. I believe in conserving family and, and the institutions that, that, that we can learn from, not have to live in in the past, but that we can learn from. I believe in the freedom of religion. I believe in its expression. It happened just last night at my capital when they broke out the tear gas. Uh, I believe in those things that hold us together. If, I'm, if the choice is, some, is an entity, a person, that of all their faults pushes those policies, then that would be the question. But I don't want him, if you're asking me straight up, I don't believe that his character is, is what leads. I think that's why he lost, is because of the lack of if character and Go ahead. If you, if you had it to do over again when the Associated Press questioned you before you offered the testimony in front of the January 6th committee, would you vote for Trump or would you vote for Biden? Give me the sound bite. Oh, I'd say uh, that would be a hard, it's like a Sophie's choice. I, can I have somebody else, please? Can we have a robust primary? Because I would really like to have somebody else who believes in the, in the virtues and practices the virtues. And I've been on the end of, but Michael, by nature, I'm more conciliatory. I, I, I want a marriage rather than a divorce. And so when you just walk cold turkey and I'll cut, I'll cut somebody slack. But what happened to my family, I sure don't want to happen again. And, and, and I don't Did want anybody to have to go through that. Did you hear from Trump oh, after no. that Associated Press story ran? Because I, I thought maybe that would have brought you back into his good graces. It seems like you're never dead with Donald Trump until you're literally dead. Well, I don't want to be literally dead. And, and I didn't hear from him. The first I heard of us was maybe 10 minutes before we went on into the committee where he said what he said about me. And I've, I'll tell you again, if you take a little bit of truth and mix it with a big lie, does that make it true? No, it makes it of a lie. And that's what he said. He told a lie. So if you're asking me if I want this guy, no, I don't want him. But I, guess, I don't want him. But I guess the missing, I guess the missing piece is, Mr. Speaker, that, that if someone were browbeaten and leaned on to do something illegal and believes that they were being asked to do something illegal, you would hear Rusty Bauer say, under no circumstances could I ever vote oh, no, for no. Donald Trump. And I'm not hearing that. No. You're... It's, it's not, it's, this is not a blanket, even partial endorsement of, John, of Donald Trump. This is a plea for civility across the country. Let's wake up. Let's get past this era. Let's go in a new direction where we can honestly and civilly be in the public square and discuss our differences, which are huge, which you've just worked through some. I, I, don't, I want that particular harsh voice gone, even though he may have a great economy, that we may have freedoms and, and uh, benefits that we didn't have previously and don't have now. I, I want somebody who can lead the country from the heart and the soul rather than from some pseudo position of power. And, and I think that's okay, what we would final, head for if final we did attempt that again. On, final attempt on my part. Final attempt on my part. What I, what I haven't heard you say is, under no circumstances, will I vote for Donald Trump? Do you want to say that, or do you not want to lock yourself in? Do, do I want to say that? Do I want to? The answer is yes. That's what I want to say. But when I'm on, w with my neighbors and friends and, and their challenges of their lives, many times the president doesn't represent all the people or even most of the people. Sometimes he walks contrary to them. And I think this man does not have the character 
to lead the country again. And, and I have a district that's a tough district and that these kind of positions aren't helping me. And, but okay, so they don't help me. I just don't want that form, that embodiment of a virtue to be my president.